Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Ellers. Jeffrey Lunnan. And this is Volume Up by The Tees. We are back. We're here. Did you miss Whoop. us? Did we miss us? I don't know. It still feels a little 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it's the year that won't end, as it turns out. New Year's Eve doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. The 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 ball drops. I don't even know if the ball dropped this year, did it? Like I don't I don't know. I stayed awake until the new year, like oh, officially. Ooh. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Had champagne, did the whole thing, but wow. did not watch a ball drop, which is a first. Like I, that's mm-hmm. like one of the things that we do. If we don't go out, it's like you watch that at least, but I yeah. couldn't tell you. I feel like there was Rock and Eve stuff going How on. How weird that Central or the, wait, Times Square was <laughs> probably a ghost town, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's all I remember is seeing pictures of like, nobody's there. Hey, did you watch Anderson Cooper and Andy from Bravo? Like do their countdown? Cause I didn't. I saw, I saw like clips. And that's about, that's about right. it. Andy Cohen's getting a lot of love and play in this podcast today. I and mean, we're going to talk about it with that. With the... <laughs> I mean, he's, he's everywhere. He's Mr. New York. He is. Mr. He's Bravo. quite a guy. <laughs> if you liked the last episode, make sure to subscribe, rate and review, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at Read the Tees. And send questions to volume up at thetees.com. Kelly and I read them. No, I was just going to say, I knew, I know why you were up New Year's Eve. You were reading emails. <laughs> Caught me. That's Busted. for sure. Yeah, wild drinking champagne. So. Yeah, just thumbing through them. No, <laughs> mousing through them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Speaking of, what an incredible interview do we have for you guys today. You guys are going to freak out. I've Amazing. freaked out. I mean, it's Tabitha. Tab- Tabitha coffee, like what? The I know, Tabitha. I feel like I kind of outed you on the freak out before, like you you she, did, like but I, I mean, did. it would have yeah. it would have come out anyway. Okay. I mean, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> I totally nerded up. I don't feel bad about it. Um, yeah, she's an icon. I mean, an honest to god, we've had a few on the podcast, Sanvia among them. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, like there are a few sort of single moniker people in our industry, and right. Tabitha is one of them. Uh, Bravo Liberty, we talk about that a lot. Uh, yep. Before Bravo was really a thing. I mean, like Sheer Genius is several years back, Tabitha's takeover. Again, we talk about that. We talk about her career. We talk about what she's up to with Matrix and with L'Oreal. You guys are not going to want to miss it. And yeah, I just can't believe that we did it. I know. Me neither. I felt like I felt a little, little nervous. Like, ooh, are we... <laughs> She's fierce and smart and brilliant and she goes for the gusto. So it was super fun. It was an honor for sure. Absolutely. Can't wait for you guys to hear that. And tell us what you think. Yes. Speaking of, I got the most amazing holiday card. Every year we get one from the pastor who married us. And this year Uh, it was clearly written on a typewriter, which I was totally geeking out about. Like, whoa, whoa. And then at the end, he was like, I'm enjoying my retirement gift, the so-and-so, whatever a typewriter would call, like circa 1976. And I thought, how charming is that, right? That is, that's, I know. wow. That's super special. That's adorable. It that, was. It number was one, like, you're in contact still. Christmas 2020. And I was like, oh. And then you kind of see where he like messed up and went back. You know, remember you had to go back and like do one over. Anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's funny you bring up cards. We have a Christmas card from, I think, two or three years ago for my dad who likes to send the Hallmark like singing ones, like as a kind of joke. But anyway, he sent the like Charlie Brown peanuts Mm -hmm. characters, whatever. It's like a like foldy outy. Yeah. And it does the Christmas song, like the Christmas time is here. So anyway, my two-year-old plays the song. And the battery still works. So like she just like points to it and then pushes the button and then just walks around with the, the card folded out with That's the stupid sweet. Peanuts Christmas song. So he would be thrilled to know that I'm sure. Yeah, no, granddad loves that. <laughs> and you'll be thrilled to know that you could just rip that battery right out anytime. <laughs> exactly. We had kept it up really high, but still no right. match for a two-year-old's determination. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So what else did you get go- up to? in the gap between holidays, you know, New Year, what we're experiencing now. 
And it was pretty laid back. I'm not going to lie. I was that total Scrooge that took down the Christmas tree <laughs> literally by 1 p.m. on Christmas Day. It was so freeing. And remember, if you a couple episodes back, I detail how my husband likes to get this big tree every year. Huh? And uh-huh. this one was probably 14 or 15 feet. So we had to open up the back d- double doors. And it was like exactly how you'd imagine it pulling it through and then every needle just springing off everywhere. So wow. That's my well, I mean that's what you get. That's what you get for doing it. <laughs> I mean like literally Christmas day or like day after. No, Christmas day. Oh, okay. It was pretty savage of me. Like I get it, but Yeah, you just like ripped out that that ripped yeah, the bandaid no off. Of... All the outside decor down. Boom, 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 stored, done. Yeah. Mhm. No sign of Christmas. <laughs> Wow. Well, I mean, you were ready for 2021. <laughs> Little did you know. Yeah, I'm still going to linger. Yep. How about you? <laughs> like, uh, did we you get the we gifts waited, and... I think, for the normal yeah. amount of time uh-huh, to take stuff down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like in the new year and now it's over and it feels like that was five years ago, but it was it only really mm-hmm. literal weeks ago. So what was like the winning gift this year for your daughter, for anyone? Uh, For my daughter, sadly. Uh, it was a stocking stuffer, like mm. cheapy little thing that my mother-in-law got for her. It was like a little, like LOL. I don't know. If you... Don't even tell me you're into wait, the wait, LOL wait. dolls. Oh, don't no, no. We're, we're not. We're okay. not. But my, but my mother-in-law got this little like <laughs> stocking stuffer mermaid that is like made of bubbles. And she has like a jellyfish Amazing. umbrella. Who yeah. Wouldn't? So that, yeah. the first thing that she opened <laughs> And like we spent way too much money, bought yeah. way mm-hmm. too many things for her this year. Yeah. That is the thing that was the oh. biggest hit. So she like went to sleep with the stupid oh. little jellyfish parasol umbrella. And How big yeah. are they? They're tiny. Oh, they're, right? yeah, they're super. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like it's just above a choking hazard. Is, <laughs> you know, not funny. So. You know, those LOL dolls, I mean, we only have boys here and they they aren't into them. And so we certainly have, I have a lot of friends who their children are just crazy. And then they collect all these little things. And then mm-hmm. you kind of feel uh-huh. bad throwing them away. Cause it's just like a little, oh, it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, I know. It's like the antithesis of what we are trying to do. Like yeah. we want like sustainable. Wood, yeah. You started off with the and... wood toys. Yep. Did you dad? Yep. And now here yep. you are <laughs> yep. unpackaging yep. plastic. <laughs> yep. Yep. Just like right to the landfill. Um, Anyway, yeah, that's the biggest hit. And then, like, I got sweaters, like, you know, good, fun, normal things. Great. Uh, My addiction to bubbly water is far less than yours. (laughs) Cheers. (laughs) Cheers. And so I, in an effort to, you know, cut down on my waste Mm -hmm. of three to four cans of LaCroix a day, I was like, I'm not going to go to the soda stream because that just seems too mainstream. I can't, I don't know what that is. I don't want to add stuff. I just, so my husband got me this ARK. Here's the bottle, A-A-R-K-E. And it's this beautifully designed like steel, just contraption with just a lever. And it just, and you can decide how bubbly you want your water. So it can do one to four sort of sessions of carbonation. And session number four makes my eight-year-old sneeze. It's so effervescent. (laughs) Wow. Well, that that does sound like a dream gift. I use it like four. Yeah. A-A-R-K-E. I use it probably like four times a day. Okay. So you just put this in there and you twirl it in and it locks in and then you press the lever. It's awesome. Okay. All right. Well, so everybody go. that's looking for something to give someone, that's the thing that you should get. <laughs> <laughs> I actually am now going to be Googling that. So yeah, you will. And you'll, you'll love it. It's so me. sleek. It's so well designed. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Other things we got into, we binged. We yep. streamed just like everybody else. We talk a little bit about it with Tabitha. We both got into Bridgerton. Yep. What are your thoughts on the show? I mean, I'm only like three episodes in, so... Oh uh, yeah, and you I gotta feel hold like on. Got to hold on yeah, tight. I'm I'm like, like binging it up in my the bedroom while everyone else is watching sports or something, and so it's kind of it's amazing, and so 
I haven't binged it fully, but what I did binge for anyone who knows of Karate Kid, Cobra Kai is the Netflix remake with mostly all of the original characters. Yeah. And many, so mm -hmm. it's got how many seasons now? It's like a couple Second deep? season. Second oh, okay. season. Yep. yep. And now because of COVID, they didn't film the third season, which is going to happen like in the fall. So it's a longer period of time. And everyone in my house loves it. I mean, mm. the only one that's not back is Mr. Miyagi, but he's there in spirit. Adorable. <laughs> that is not one of the suggested titles for me, if you can imagine. But who knows? I mean, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel of yeah, Netflix. You're these almost days, the so. end of streaming and it may just <laughs> pop right up. <laughs> Maybe this weekend. We'll see. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I convinced my kids that I know karate and that back in the day I knew how to use nunchucks and they were like, no. <laughs> I feel like you could definitely. Yeah. I don't, I think I could try. Wield a nunchuck. Nun, nunchuck. Yeah. <laughs> what does one use them for? <laughs> to be filmed for karate movies. Yes. Yeah, that's and... about the extent I think. <laughs> So anyway, as that's what that's what happened. Here we are, ready to take yep. on twenty twenty one. And of course, a million other things are happening in the world uh, that we can hardly keep up with. Uh, however, <laughs> our incredible team of editors on the tees, uh, the tees .com specifically, have been writing all sorts of amazing stories as you know pertinent to the salon professional space. So lots about hair, lots about beauty, and there are a few that we think you should take a look at. Uh, so here are our favorite articles that are up on the site. Kelly, what's first up for you? First up for me is, I mean, I love a good look backwards, right? And I don't know if 2020 is the right year to look back, but we can talk <laughs> about, <laughs> we can talk about hair moments at least. Let's just go there. And so uh, you know, the article from boy perms to the unforgettable fly during the debates. I mean, we can't, we're not going to get over that moment. Nope. And UPS lifting bans on black hairstyles, which seems absolutely astonishing that there was a ban, to be honest. And so mm -hmm. that article, I was loving. In the spirit of a good listicle, I have eight celebrity barbers that you need to know and follow. That was the top one this week for me. Uh, basically, if you're into men's grooming, you should know about these folks. And if you don't, shame on you. So go to the site, <laughs> see who's there. There's some real royalty among the, the people that have been listed. It was actually really taxing for our editorial team to, to edit that list down to the eight that yeah. we do have. So I think you guys are going to really like that. I love the art of barbering. Ugh. It's amazing. My last one is Pravana. I mean, they've made moves in the industry since literally day one with their vivid colors. And, you know, living here in the Midwest, there's some hard water woes sometimes. And so, yeah, I mean, and so I thought it was interesting. Their demineralizing collection launched. So it basically takes out like the lactic acid um, and it really cleanses your hair. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so kudos to Pravana. Kudos to Pravana and kudos to the Tees team. As always, so much going on. Thank you to our hardworking editors on thetees.com. We are so proud to publish the stories that salon pros and consumers care about. Okay, I feel like there should be some sort of drum roll. Um, the moment you've been waiting for, and I cannot wait for you to hear more about the one and only Tabitha Coffee on our podcast. We've had quite a few famous stylists, salon owners, and industry icons on our show, but I am not sure that we've had anyone quite like today's guest, the one and only Tabitha Coffee. Tabitha is well known in the beauty industry, but unlike many of our guests, she's also well known right there in the living rooms of consumers across the globe. A business expert, she has owned salons, worked behind the chair, and previously been seen on multiple reality shows, including sheer genius Tabitha Takes Over. I mean, a Bravo liberty before that was even a thing. Tabitha is now the global business ambassador for Matrix, a L'Oreal professional brand, and runs her own business consulting firm. So with that, Tabitha, welcome to Volume Up by the Tees. We are absolutely thrilled to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Bravo, Liberty. Oh, it's true. Ugh. Oh, did we make that up? I don't know. <laughs> So Tabitha, just to kind of get back into 
to your roots. Like, let, tell us a little bit about, like, I know that you come from a salon family. I do as well. My mom was a salon owner for 40 years. So I was the gal folding the towels in the back and dusting the shelves. <laughs> um, so tell us when you knew this space was for you. Honestly, I probably think I always knew. My mother was a hairdresser, um, but not a working hairdresser. And my eldest brother was actually a hairdresser as well, but also had stopped being a hairdresser by the time I came around. I think my love of hairdressing was I would go to the salon with my mum every week and she would get her weekly blow dry. And I was a kid that was picked on at school a lot, bullied, didn't really fit in, had an unconventional and unusual childhood. And the salon was just this really amazing space. And the energy was incredible. I thought the hairdressers were amazing. They expressed themselves. Everyone loved seeing them. They loved seeing everyone. And there was just, you know, I would sit there and watch everyone come in one way and go out another. And it was never really the hair for me. It was truly the transformation that took place in the person. And that was really empowering for me. And that was all because of a hairdresser. So I started to believe that hairdressers were rock stars, as I still do believe that today. And I wanted to be a rock star. You know, I think the same of my mom as well. And I love it. I mean, I grew up in a very small town in the Midwest, but that feeling resonates everywhere. There's really something to be said about that transformation. And it's rare that someone leaves the salon not feeling their best selves. And, you know, I think that's a beautiful thing to comment on. Yeah, it's look, it was really empowering. And it's always been kind of the North Star for me. It's not... Um, I know it's about the hair and I know it's about the craft and I understand that, but it is so much more than just that. And it's one of the frustrations when I hear people say, oh, I'm just a hairdresser or I'm only a hairdresser. It's one of the phrases that irks me to no end because, yes, the hair is important, but we really do empower a client that's sitting in our chair even for 10, 20, 15 minutes, whatever it is, it may be the only time that someone has cared about them, asked them how they are, taken care of them, checked in with them and made them feel really good about themselves. Um, and on that note, we found this quote while we were doing some research um, and correct us if it's not actually grounded in reality. We were trying to find if this was the case, but let's start with it and then you can correct the record if you need to. Um, you were purported to have said, uh, following the lead of trans performers, my parents' clubs, I wanted to create looks that expressed how people felt inside rather than how others perceived them or wanted them to be. Authenticity is and always has been the key to who I am and who I want to include in my life. Number one, is that something you actually said? That's me. <laughs> okay. I love build, it. <laughs> build, <laughs> building on that, uh, the LGBTQ community, especially members of color, had a lot to say about the beauty industry and its failings, specifically in 2020. Uh, based on really what you were just talking about, how is beauty a space that can foster inclusivity, build allies, and generate greater understanding? Look, I was really lucky that I grew up the way I did, surrounded by the trans community and other members of the LGBTQ plus community. I am also part of the community myself. So growing up in that environment gave me a very different mindset and you know, perception of everything. I think the salon industry has taken a lot of flack recently. Some of it um, is well noted and certainly needs to change. Um, I think some of it is frustration that people are feeling that they absolutely should be feeling that way and that's totally warranted. I have always believed that for me to be good at my craft, every client is welcome in my door. I, without judgment, I am not going to judge you, right? That's not that's not my job. My job is to create what you want, if feasible and available, with your hair, and that is my job. And I approach hair as a fabric, and that's how I look at it, and that's how I approach it, craft it, style it, work with it, talk to a client about it, and then try and solve whatever needs they are. Um, and I think it's something that we need to do more of and kind of come out of our boxes, whatever box that is, right? Whatever box we're living in, come out. And even if you may not want to embrace all hair types, 
let's learn about them all. Let's do it because it makes us better at what we do and kind of do away with this narrow, narrow-minded thinking. Speaking of jumping outside of our box, if you will, and teaching about different hair textures, knowing the industry has space to learn, how did that philosophy help drive your early career, that inclusivity and accepting mindset? For me, it was always hair. It was just hair, right? It's just, it's hair. And and that's kind of where it came from. So um, as basic as that sounds, it was a client sat in my chair and had whatever kind of hair that was and had whatever issue they had with their hair or wish to have it look a different way. And my job as an expert is to fulfill that need and try and get them closer to their goal. And that's how hair has no race, right? Like it doesn't, it, it's an extension of who we are, yes, but our job is to treat the hair. And that is the philosophy of how I've approached it. It looking at it, it doesn't matter what kind of hair it is. You know, I spent many years traveling all through Asia and then dealing with and learning about all the different types of Asian to say Asian hair is very broad, but it's different as all our hairs are different. And we need to embrace that and look at that and learn about that. It makes us better technicians. It makes us stronger business owners and stylists behind the chair and and better experts. Um, And it does make us inclusive. And we need to learn from each other within this industry and embrace each other. And if we don't know, go to the source. There are so many unbelievable artists out there that are Black artists and Asian artists and Latino artists and there's so many great talents out there. Go and ask them. Follow them on Instagram. Look at their work. See what they're doing. DM them. Ask them a question. Slide into those DMs. We (laughs) we recently had a guest on the podcast, uh, Monet Everett, who talked about if you Mm -hmm. don't really work with all of the hair textures, you are a hair enthusiast. You're not a hairstylist. Um, That makes me think very much of what you're talking about in terms of being an expert. So beyond getting in touch with someone that you maybe admire that's a Black hairstylist or Latino, et cetera, on their Instagram, how else might we as an industry go about educating ourselves better, um, exposing uh, the sort of mainstream uh, to other hair textures? I mean, there are so many billions of people in this world and so much of the industry focuses on you know, a slight spectrum of hair type. Um, what do you think we can do as an industry to better ourselves, to expand that worldview? So I think go and learn, right? There's there's so much education out there. And during this time, there is so much education that is online. So there really is no excuse for not being able to go to a class. Much of the education is free and people are putting it out there and sharing their wisdom and their knowledge and expertise. Um, some of it is paid for, but You can, at your fingertips, go and take a class, learn, read about the different hair textures. If you are not familiar with textured hair, again, texture doesn't fall into one category. Go and learn all about the different curl patterns and formations and tightness and the terminology and language so that you do that in a mindful, appropriate way Don't use your own terminology that you've made up or think is going to work for someone. Make sure you are doing it in the right way to start that conversation and learn. Grab a mannequin head, right? You can can get mannequin heads with all different textures in their hair. Kind of goes back to getting out of that box. We put ourselves in this box and we say we do dot, 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 whatever, whatever that is. And then that's everything we do. We buy mannequins that represent that. We stick with the things that we know because it's comfortable. If we want to grow, we have to be comfortable with discomfort. Yeah, and Jeffrey, you brought up a really great point with Monet on the pod previously. Is this even rooted in beauty school, right? What are we teaching fundamentally from the beginning and how how there's so much room and space to learn there as well? Yeah, it is something that starts at beauty school. And 
I didn't go to school in this country, right? So yeah. I I went plus I went to school so long ago. <laughs> I basically, you know, had a chisel where I enough <laughs> stuff. I know. <laughs> so long. So I did have a little bit of a, a different education than some of the, I, I say young with love, the kids that are going into beauty school now because they're young sure. in the industry. It has nothing to do with age. And we're not, we're not showing enough diversity in beauty school. And that is not fair for anyone at all. I don't care who you are, where you come from, where you want to go, the clientele that you want to do. We need to approach our philosophy on hair as a texture, mm -hmm. embrace all of those textures that come mm -hmm. into what we call hair sure. and teach people appropriately in beauty school what that is. And then, you know, let everyone, everyone has their ideal clientele or the dream clients they want to do, then Continue your education as we all do. Hone your skills, get better, practice more, get a mentor, do all of those things. But it does fundamentally start in our schools. So Tabitha, thank you so much for walking us through your sort of philosophy. I mean, we're going to talk about that in depth, um, but we do want to be fair to the audience. We know that a lot of people are coming to us because of your background in reality TV, which I'm a huge fan of. Sheer genius, Tabitha takes over, relative success, so many. Again, we've established you were a Bravo celebrity before there were Bravo celebrities. Um, <laughs> how the hell did you get to reality TV from where you started? Um, look, it was really easy. And I say that honestly and with a little bit of awe and wonder. There was a casting call for Sheer Genius. Um, I actually, it was put through hairdressing trade at the time. Um, I actually got it through a model agency that I used for hair models, also sent it out to hairdressers that they worked with and that were on the books. Um, new reality show competition hairdressers, that was pretty much all that was shared. Turn up for more information and a casting. I, it was on a Sunday. It was a salon that I knew really well and I had a bunch of friends that worked there. And I decided that on my way to my typical Sunday brunch, I would do a drive-by and I would give it an hour. If it took longer than an hour, I was going to my brunch reservation and I'd just kind of see what it was. My curiosity was peaked and I'm competitive by nature and I like to push myself. Um, and honestly, the rest is pretty much history. I was taken inside, spoke to the casting director went back the next day, had another maybe hour on conversation with them. And then probably two weeks later, three weeks later, had a phone call, you need to be in LA. And I actually said, I don't want to go now. The thrill for me was the chase, not actually the winning. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to go now. I don't want to leave my salon and my partner and my family and my dog. And, you know, it sounded really good, but Six weeks locked up with people I don't know kind of sounds really hideous to me. Um, and he's still actually a really good friend of mine, the casting director, said, well, you signed a contract. Oof. And it was for a lot of money. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll be on the plane. <laughs> and honestly, that was it. I, it was, I make it sound easy because it was. I have to believe it was meant to be. Uh, not to be too woo-woo, but I, I mean, it really just kind of was that easy and I know it isn't that easy anymore and probably people are listening going, ugh. It, I think the biggest takeaway for me is following the opportunity. You never know where the opportunities are and you never know where they're going to lead you, right? So it would have been a very different story if I hadn't have gone. I think that's kind of what it is, following the opportunity and Tabitha's salon takeover and Tabitha's takeover um, honestly came, yes, from Sheer Genius. I got a phone call from Bravo after Sheer Genius was finished and they asked me if I would come in to 30 Rock and have lunch with them. And I thought they were going to give me a T-shirt and go, you know. Ah, come on. You were the breakout star. We all, I mean, we all knew. Yeah, we remember. Uh, like, thanks for playing. Ah. Um, and they said, 
how do you feel about doing a show? How did you feel? I said yes straight away. I mean, it wasn't, I said yes straight away in, but I had conditions, right? I had sure. conditions that my family were off limits. My clients were off limits. My clients paid for my service and my expertise not to be put on television or spoken about or any of those things. I'd had enough of a taste of being on television through sheer genius that I knew how vile people mm -hmm. were when they hide behind a computer screen and aren't seen and how they come and attack you or attack the people around you that you love. And I just didn't want to do that to my, my staff, my clients, my family. I signed up for this. Um, no one else did. So, so Bravo, honestly, were amazing. They said they would work with me. We came up for the concept of Tabitha Salon Takeover, which was our first mm -hmm. go out. And, yeah, they keep asking me back. So I'm doing something right. You definitely are. I mean, you've spoken a little bit about how vile people can be. I mean, the big sort of elephant in the room is that you were America's villain, right? You were painted to be this bitch character, um, which has led you to sort of take that back. I mean, recently you've just had a class um, in which, you know, like what the hell's wrong with being called a bitch? Like if there's power in it, like let's take it back. What does it mean to you uh, in 2021 now to be called a bitch? I came up with the acronym bitch because that is the word everyone chose to use for me. They mm -hmm. could have used my name. They could have called me a hairdress or Australian blonde, but it was bitch. And it wasn't done in the cute way of bitch, you look cute today. It was done in a <laughs> mean way. Yeah. And it was actually quite hurtful when I fell down the rabbit hole of reading all the blogs and the things that people said about me, which wasn't cute. And that's where the acronym came from. So it's brave, intelligent, tenacious, creative, and honest. And what I wanted to do was take the power away from the people that were calling me this word without knowing who I am or how I function or the human that I am and putting this label on me and own it on my terms in my way and come up with something that I could say, yes, I am a bitch because it fell under the umbrella of the acronym that I made. And it resonated. I, I do talks about it. Um, I have a class that I teach called Bitch Camp. And so many women out there it's resonated with because it's a name that is used for a lot of women that speak their truth or stand mm -hmm. up for themselves or say what's on their mind. And that's the label. Incredible. It's so powerful. Well, I mean, it's why you're the best. <laughs> it's so bitches great. get shit done. We love it. <laughs> um, we are going to talk about Bravo for just a couple more seconds, then we're going to move on to all of the incredible things that you're up to these days. Um, I saw you recently on Watch What Happens Live, uh, the Christmas special, something or another, uh, with Andy. What are your thoughts about Andy's current hair situation? Are you a fan of the longer? Do you I like it actually, shorter? No, actually, okay. I have to say, I re Andy's got gorgeous hair. I mean, he really does. He's just got really good hair. I actually like it a little longer. I'm, I keep telling him that I'm enjoying it and I like it a little longer. So I'm not going to hate on it. I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. All right. I respect it. Uh, are there other folks on the channel, uh, maybe from the past, that have really incredible hair from your perspective? I mean, you are the expert. Oh, God. I, look, honestly, there's, there's so many. But here's what I will say. They all have glam squads. So if it wasn't for that great hairdresser or makeup artist standing behind all of those Bravo celebrities, um, including Andy, right? And Andy mm -hmm. would admit that himself. He loves his the guy he goes to for his haircut. He's got a great um, makeup artist on set that makes sure he's not shiny and he looks good. You know, if it wasn't for the great glam squad behind these people, None of us roll out of bed looking like that. So, yeah, there's there's tons of amazing. It's actually one of the questions that pisses me off more than anything, if I'm really honest, because everyone asks, who's got great hair? Well, we all do when we have someone, if we're not adept at doing it ourselves, we've all got a great hairdresser behind us or a great makeup artist that 
beats our face down and makes us look incredible. So beautifully said, beautifully said. <laughs> and love the giving the shout out to the the pros who are making all of this possible because you're right, it takes a village often. Speaking of those experts, tell us a little bit about the current campaign with L'Oreal and Matrix that you're working on right now. It's called Back in Style, and it's a really great campaign because it's a way of letting clients know that we are open, we're safe, we're taking care of their needs, their health. You know, their health and safety is front and foremost in our minds and we're making sure we can do, as stylists, business owners, anyone in the beauty profession, taking care of their needs and following all the protocols that are there. It's also a way for salons to know that they're being supported um, and also to let clients know that if your salon is closed, there are many other ways that you can support us. You can buy gift certificates. You can buy your retail products from us. You can set up a future appointment. You can write a great review for us. There, are, You can send a tip, right? Like, I have spoken to a lot of clients that even if they weren't getting their hair cut regularly, they still budget for that money and they were in a position that they could still send that money to their hairdresser, which is just so incredible and so amazing. But it was a way for us at L'Oreal to really let everyone know with Back in Style campaign that it's a really tough road for everyone out there at the moment with COVID and business owners are really struggling but we wanted the public especially to know that salon owners are doing everything they can to take care of their clients, following all these protocols, making sure that we have everything in place and there are ways that clients can still support us. And we wanted all the beauty professionals out there and salon owners and stylists to know that we're also supporting them. And I love that. And, you know, we've recently talked a lot with our group where, you know, as I mentioned in the Midwest, it feels really incredibly safe and the protocols to keep everyone safe are astounding and wonderful. And I'm hopeful that we, you know, get through this, our small business owners that we love get through this. And what a great point, you know, you're budgeting for that anyway. So why not help that person out? It's likely that you have a great relationship with them, your stylist, uh, you know, that's a really, really smart part of this campaign. Well, and a lot of salon owners were having a hard time reaching out to all their clients or our businesses changed because of rolling lockdowns. So mm -hmm. this was a great way to let clients know that if you, even if you can't come in or if a client doesn't feel they're safe enough to come in because maybe they are high risk or they're just nervous, which is totally understandable, then there are still ways that you can support your salon, um, which I think is really important. And also to let our clients know that part of our training and part of the reason why we license professionals is because of the health, safety and sanitation and disinfection that we do in our licensing. So safety protocols are something that we're taught in beauty school from a very early age. It's something that is always we have to go through, look at, learn so that we're not passing anything on to our clients. So we are taking care of the health, safety and hygiene of them. And I think that was something that I was really um, actually proud to talk about when L'Oreal asked me to do some press about the Back in Style campaign to let consumers and clients know there is a reason why we license professionals. There's a reason why we go to school. There's a reason why we pay this much money to get our hairdressing license and have to keep up our continued education hours and, you know, pay for our licensing to be redone is because of this training, not just about doing your hair and doing a beautiful balayage or the things that we do, but actually for the safety and cleanliness of our guests that come in. I just interviewed Leslie Roasty a couple of episodes back uh, from Blue Co Brands, and she was talking so much about what you just mentioned uh, in terms of all of the certification uh, training, all of the hours that go into what makes up the license um, for professional stylists. Um, how can consumers find out more about this program though, right? So like we've heard you talk about sort of things that they can do. Is there a website that they could visit where they see like, oh, bullet point one, two, three, this is all of the stuff I'm going to do to support my stylist. Where can they find more? 
Absolutely. So we're doing it on our social media. Back in Style campaign is a campaign on social media. So I've been posting it. Probably one of your favorite salons or hairdressers, if it's a consumer out there, is posting it as well. Otherwise, you can go to the website hair.com backslash back in style campaign. Amazing. We will include that in the show notes, everybody. Are there any other bits of advice for pros out there? I mean, who knew we would still be here January of 2021, but what is your advice or inspiration for professionals out there weathering the storm? What would that advice be? So I think the first thing is to communicate, right? Communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, I think some early on, some business owners felt that everyone was glued to the news, watching what was happening, knew what was happening in their area. Um, not everyone was, right? Not everyone did realize that businesses were closed or certain businesses were closed and maybe they couldn't go in. So I think this has definitely been the time to work on your business if you couldn't work in your business to make sure that your computer systems, your emails are in place, that you can, however you communicate with your clients, right? Facebook, social media, Instagram, emails, calling them, whatever you do, and check in with them, right? Clients want clients are wondering about us. We're wondering about them as well. There's nothing wrong with that check-in. I think we're all missing that human connection at the moment. So being able to do that check-in is a big thing. Um, doing what you can virtually. I think that's actually great technology and something that will keep going. Being able to do a consultation with a client virtually, being able to spend a little bit more extra time and talk about their hair wishes, right? Their hair dreams and and do it through Zoom or FaceTime or whatever system you want to use is great as well. And the other thing that I've been talking about a lot is finances. Biggest hit that everyone's taken is money, right? So it doesn't matter whether you're a business owner or an independent suite owner, wherever you fall in the spectrum, none of us have been able to make the money that we made the previous year because of what's happened. So I honestly have talked to hundreds and hundreds of hairdressers through last year. I'd started an initiative called Conversations with Tabitha before COVID hit and decided it was a great time to keep the conversations going. They changed, but they were helpful, I hope, for everyone <laughs> that I spoke to. And the people that didn't have any savings, the people that live a lifestyle, not save for life or plan for life, are really struggling, as is everyone. And it's something we don't talk about a lot. We don't talk about finances. We don't talk about money. It's that dirty subject that no one really wants to bring up or talk about. I've been talking about it for months. I actually got certified in financial training during COVID because I like to have knowledge and, and experience in what I'm doing, just not talk out of my butt. Um, and I wanted real training and expertise, advice and help so that I could have these conversations with beauty professionals and know what I was talking about and have some training and proper industry knowledge behind me. And I think that is the number one thing we need to start looking at moving forward is how we spend our money, how we use our money, how we save our money and start looking at it differently moving forward because Hopefully we'll come out of this, but there is always something. Ask any business owner that's had a washing machine breakdown, a stylist walk out, a flood, right? There's always something that happens and life is the same way and we need to plan better for it. That's really beautifully put. I mean, we're dealing with COVID right now. We're talking about the back and style campaign, but your role with Matrix is obviously much larger than that. So you're a global business ambassador. Um, so what all does the role entail for you? I mean, you've talked about financial literacy. What other programs are you up to? Sort of walk us through what that looks like at this point. So being the global business ambassador for Matrix is a very nice title. Um, I hope I, I hope I deserve it and work for it. I do a lot of education classes, so we obviously haven't been able to do it in the same way 
this year, probably in <laughs> 20 or 21, although we're hopeful, but it's doing virtual online education and giving the information, talking about, I focus on what I'm really passionate about. So it is about finances, business tips, and self-improvement, right? We need to feel good about ourselves. We need to come over some of um, when we're talking before about opportunities of, right, what I've done and going on Bravo. It's looking for those opportunities. It's getting out of your own way and actually pursuing them and, and getting rid of the self-doubt and stepping into that role and that power that you have. So I do a lot of classes around communication, business building, branding, um, finances will be added in now as well and really about self-empowerment. In 2019, um, we launched a program called Mentor Me where I took five new to the industry beauty professionals and I mentored them for a year personally along with the entire Matrix team. So it wasn't just me, it, it truly took a village and all the incredible Matrix artists and artistic directors and directors and brand ambassadors, everyone kind of had a hand in their progress and taught a class and it was truly one of the most amazing things I've ever done. And they graduated January 2020 at Matrix Destination in Florida. They actually presented models on stage. Um, it was a really big moment for all of them and just an incredible, an incredible way actually to go into a really crap year because that was the high point for us all and we're really glad that we got to experience it and do it before kind of the world changed. Um, and I'm really happy to say that Mentor Me will be coming back in 2021, but we're expanding and it will be open to more people, um, not just fresh out of the industry, beauty professionals. We'll also be expanding it with other programs that are mentoring availabilities and giving mentorship and help and advice to other um, salon owners again chair renters stylists behind the chair suite owners nationwide and i'm really excited to be part of that and look forward to that launching really soon congratulations that's incredible you heard it here first everybody mentor me coming back for 2021 so glad to hear that i was literally just going to ask you about it and then boom there it was yeah, it was a it was a good program, and the five um, I call them kids. They were like my children. I was definitely mother hen to them, so they're all doing really well. We we check in with each other um, all the time to check their progress, and it it really was such a great program. And I'm really so incredibly grateful to Matrix for seeing the value in it um, of the lives that we touched and the way their lives were really changed. And, and we as a team, what we got out of it as well by, by being able to share, um, with them. And I'm really excited that it's going to come back and we've kind of revamped it and turned it up a little bit and still holding true to our roots and the founder of Matrix, Arnie Miller's vision for elevating the hairdressing industry. So I'm excited to be part of it. And we are excited that it is going to continue. This is exactly the kind of good news that we want for 2021. There's been a lot of awful stuff going on. Uh, that is the, the light at the, the end of the tunnel for us, for sure. Okay, Tabitha, this is the sort of end of our podcast. While we wind down, we always do quick takes. So these are things that we ask of every single guest. Same questions, although there is a new one. And I'm curious to see how you're going to respond to it. Um, we are looking for your hottest hot take. Um, we've already taken up a ton of your time. We're not going to keep you for much longer, but we do want to leave somebody with uh, something fun. So first up, product that you are loving right now. It could be anything, all of the things. What's something that you are living and dying for? Well, I can't get enough of my moisturizer at the moment because it's cold as hell in New Jersey and my my skin's needs a bit of t TLC. Um, and I'm going to be really honest. I'm going to get in so much trouble for Plug this. Plug it. And it, no, it's not a plug. I'm going to get in trouble because I don't remember the no! official name. <laughs> I work for a company. So some, you know, I get stuff sent to me and mm -hmm. I put it in my bathroom and I try everything. And sometimes it's not even 
like the pretty label bottles yet, right? Mm -hmm. That's part of the fun of working for a company. Matrix has this new shine product that is actually for shine and it's a serum that you put in your hair and just leave it in for like three minutes in the shower and rinse it out. Oh, all the feels. It is delicious. It makes my hair so shiny and bouncy and gorgeous and I'm just living for it at the moment. I'm sure the marketing team is going to be drooling about that. That is, we are looking forward to it. They're probably going to be calling me going, hey, how did you not remember the name of that? (laughs) Well, we are looking forward to it. We can add it to the show notes whenever. All right. Second up, bar soap or body wash? Oh, my God. Body wash? Who uses a bar of soap? That's so disgusting. Tabitha, this is exactly what we wanted to hear. I mean, I'm a body wash person. Kelly could be a bar soap person, though. What about bar is, soap? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fair. That must have been the new one, Jeff. That, that threw was. me for a loop. All right, all right. Good, good, good. That's I'm glad to hear. Um, okay, COVID. We talked about this. It's a mess. People are not in the salon. People are at home. What are you streaming? TV, music, movies, what is it? I've like streamed everything and I've run out. It's been on Netflix all the time, but I've binged so much that I've literally depleted my whole list now. So Bridgerton was last. Mm -hmm. Um, The Queen, obviously, that was amazing. Pretty much anything that's come out on Netflix I've, I've binged through, but... If anyone's got anything good out there, you better tell me. Now I'm getting a little desperate. <laughs> Make sure to comment. I, Incredible. I have a desperate one. I have one. So I am not a Hallmark movie kind of gal, but oh there's God, this gay one. What? The gay Hallmark movie was amazing. I watched it three times. <laughs> really? Okay, fine. Okay, you got me. Here's one you would like. It's called, well, maybe not. I don't know. It's called Virgin River. And it's oh, a t- watch that. Oh, oh, I've watched okay. that. All right. All right. That. She's got it. I got She's nothing got it. then. <laughs> there were, it was like the year of LGBTQ Christmas movies on yep. Prime Network. So <laughs> I watched all of them. But the Hallmark one did all right. bring a tear to my eye. Three times I watched it. Oh. Wow. All right. All right. That's all right. streaming. Up next. <laughs> I was going to say that's the plug for Hallmark. All right. Uh, okay. Just two more questions. Real talk words of advice for pros who want to get to the top of our industry. What do you say? Never stop. Never stop learning, never stop believing, never stop trying, never stop failing. Because failing isn't a failure, it's just a lesson. So honestly, never stop. Get out of your own damn way. Just get, you have to get out of your own way. You have to stop letting fear kind of stop you from oh, what's everyone going to say? And am I as good as so-and-so on social media? And I don't have as many followers. And can I just leave it all behind? And if you want it, then narrow focus, zero in, and you don't stop. You don't stop learning. You don't stop growing. And by the way, when you get there, wherever you think there is, right, wherever that magical destination of there is, you'll probably get there and either think, oh, that was it, so what's next, right? You can't then just rest on your laurels. You've got to keep going and going and going. And that's really the amazing thing about this industry is because there's so many different avenues and paths and directions and things that we can do but stay within the community that we love and doing the craft that we love that it really doesn't limit us at all. And you're walking the walk, right? Uh, Because with your financial literacy that you've been learning even during COVID. So the kiss of death is to become stagnant. Like that's just the kiss of death or to become complacent Mm. and think, oh, yeah, I got it. I can do that. I could do that with my eyes closed. Well, I don't want anyone to do it with their eyes closed. I want them to do it with intention and focus and their eyes wide open and see exactly where they're going. And the only way to keep growing is to keep learning. So I don't care if it's a new skill, if it's learning about yourself, learning about communication, learning about business, learning about a hair technique or a color, whatever it is, it expands your knowledge and 
your perception of things and it grows you in some way. So we have to keep learning all the time. Well put. Last question. You've sort of addressed this already when you were talking about there being so many different avenues to our beautiful industry. Um, what are your predictions for 2021 for the Salon Pro space? Like what the heck do we have in store for us? I actually think there's a lot of good things. I'm really, I'm optimistic that we will be back together. I don't think it will be early, if I'm honest, but I have no doubt we will be back together. I think the fact that um, some in the industry were a little late to adopt to technology <laughs> and have worked it out on the fly and are getting much better at it, I think that opens up a whole nother opportunity for education to be able to get into the hands and the homes and the hearts of the people that maybe couldn't go to a show for whatever reason. Um, I've had so many ex-hairdressers reach out to me during this and say, all this online education has made me want to come back, right? I'm going to come back to the industry. It, it's just been amazing to see. So I think that will continue. I do, as I said, think that we'll be together again. Um, I know at Matrix we've got an amazing hair show coming up in 2021 on March 1st and 2nd, Synergy, that is taking all our global artists as well as all the artists from America and artistic directors and influencers and ambassadors and all of our international team. And we're doing two days. I think there are 20 different experiences um, and like 30 six, 38 classes available to everyone over two days, which is going to be amazing. Um, and believe me, I, it's a beast to, I've been doing some of my classes, so they have really been working on the technology and making sure that they bring something extraordinary. And I think those kind of innovations are the things that will keep going. And I also think there's been this really amazing coming together of the industry as well and seeing people reach out and reach across and support and have conversations and kind of check in with each other and I think that has been through all the rubbish that everyone's gone through and the hard time everyone's gone through I think that has been a much needed and really impressive and great thing to see as well. No doubt. As Jeffrey mentioned, well stated, you know, it was, is a pleasure uh, spending this last almost hour with you. And thank you again for your time. Before we go, um, give us a shout out and tell us again where the listeners can find you on your channels, um, as well as the Back in Style campaign and program. So Back in Style, if you go to hair.com backslash back in style, you'll find all the information for the campaign there. Um, for Synergy, the show that I talked about, or my favorite product that I can't remember the name <laughs> of, that I'm going to get in so much trouble about, you can go to matrix.com. Um, all the info will be on there. And on social media, it's me and it's my name. So it's Tabitha, T A B A T H A, everyone. <laughs> Coffee on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever else. You find have me. you joined? Have you joined the TikTok yet? I'm not doing TikTok. <laughs> I, don't even look at it. I don't join it. I don't look at it. People send me TikTok videos and I just write back. I'm not a member, not joined, <laughs> don't want to. No. So savage. There's I love enough. it. <laughs> I, just, I have enough going on that I don't need TikTok in my life. No one needs to see me do some stupid dance or something. <laughs> They'd love it something though. Something ridiculous. So. Uh, uh, no, I'll just stick to what I love, what I do really well, what I enjoy yes. and keep teaching my classes and that's it. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what is there to say other than that? Uh, the dream, it happened, not enough time. I know. Amazing as she's amazing, as amazing as I had anticipated and probably more. I mean, let's be honest. She's, she's a figure in our industry. So cool to chat with her and to talk a little bit about 
you know, we're going to bring it full circle back to Andy and his hair even. And I have to agree. I like his longer hair. That's hot. I feel like I was shocked from you and from her for saying that. Like, I feel like it looks awful, but you know, I'm, <laughs> if she's, if she's telling me that it's good, then I've, I've got something wrong with me. And in fact, it, it is good. So yeah. In fact, you are overruled on the podcast. <laughs> I'll take it gladly. So in addition, if you guys missed it, which how could you, Tabitha talked a lot about the L'Oreal professional back and style program. We've got tons of links and information within the show notes. Please be sure to check it out and make sure to take advantage and support the stylists. Be sure to hit subscribe, rate and review and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and the TikTok at Read the Teas. And send in questions to Jeffrey, who's waiting by his inbox to volumeup at thetease.com. Volume Up is a Tease Media production. This episode was produced by Monica Hickey and Stephen Jodorand. Thank you to our creative team, Kay Reynolds and Haley Hefner, for putting together the graphics for this episode, and to Josh Landowski for editing so that you can watch and listen on YouTube.